Okay, welcome to Plastic Models by a Regular Dude. That 70s build. Part 4. To me, a Tiger 1 in 125th scale from 19 and 69. So, um, at the end of Part 3, I had finished the front, put all the parts on. Did the back, except for the parts that are flopping around inside the model here that have to be painted once I uh, um, get the uh, mufflers or the uh, exhaust rusted. So that's where I am with that part. The next parts coming up start at, uh, let me get this pointer here, start at step 14 right here and the first part of step 14 um, is putting the fenders and the track tow rope the track cable used for winding the tracks back onto the running gear that is provided um, as uh, steel wire which is kind of nice um, it is steel so it's kind of rigid but um, I remember building when I built this thing back in the 80s the first one I did of these uh, it wasn't bad uh, installing this even though it's kind of stiff material it actually worked pretty well um, the the anchor points on the side of the tank are molded onto the tank so where you loop it around you can get a nice good loop going on so that that won't be that big of a deal that'll be easy and uh, you know if I could uh, I'm trying to build as much out of the box as possible since this is for the uh, the group build but um, then uh, we've got the upper hull plate right here and uh, be installing all of the parts for that um, tools uh, blo uh, jack block uh, headlights um, antenna uh, fire extinguisher uh, all those little parts I'll be installing those and assembling the uh, driver and radio operators hatches be assembling those and installing those in step 16 and uh, you know then we have the tow ropes and I was thinking about scratching some of those tow ropes but I'm gonna look at the kit versions and I'll talk about it later once I kind of determine I may just use the kit ones um, just just in sticking with the spirit of an out-of-the-box build um, of something that was made way back when and then the remaining uh, FIFL uh, air cleaner parts uh, that's a detail shot of it and uh, so that that will be the next parts a um, few notes on the instructions the cable um, this is a, a diagram of the actual size of the cable um, so I'll use that as a template and it comes with some vinyl tubing to uh, make the sleeves that hold the ends of the cable together so I'll be using that template um, also there's a template here for the lengths of hose for the Fife Air cleaner system so I'll be cutting those and then uh, another one of those things that I like about the old Tamiya instructions is these cool photos that they add of the the model kit itself um, kind of gives you an overview of the parts that um, one will be working on at a given time so anyway I'm going to uh, start getting this stuff ready and I'll come back a little bit later with some of the actual construction okay I'm starting to work on this uh, tow rope here <clears throat> or not tow rope but the uh, track re rewinding rope cable whatever you want to call it and here is what I'm doing. Um, I'm going to tilt this on its side. Whoa, good thing that lid was on. 
I'm going to tilt this on its side so you can see what I'm talking about. It may stand there, it may not. I don't want it to fall over, but um, this cable, if you if you are building this kit and you're using this cable, um, there's some notes. This cable, there's only about three or four strands. Uh, maybe not even that much. It might. Well, yeah, it looks like three strands. Let's see. It looks like maybe three strands, but being steel cable whenever you make the bins on the loop or on the the bins where they go around the posts on the side of the tank when you make those it'll tend to kind of fray out on one side so what I did what I found work for me is when I made the kink I just t take it and hold it as close to this uh, as possible and twist to kind of bind it back together so you don't end up with this big splayed gapped open part in in the uh, in the bend and um, the instructions as I noted actually give uh, a template but I found it's much easier to use the tank itself so what I did is I made my loop first I cut the uh, the vinyl tubing that comes with it that serves as the the clamp part and I put that on the you know first peg where it goes I pulled it tight wrapped it around this next peg it's hard to do it on its side but you can't see it otherwise and then pull it tight okay so that gives you a nice straight um, straight piece of cable with a nice sharp bend in it then once I get that one I can hold that in place it doesn't matter if this one pops off and then I do the same thing there and uh, oddly enough that is exactly how I remember doing it a long time ago and it worked really well and not only is there uh, the anchor points but also there are clamps additional clamps that go in these uh, holes here that help hold it in place so it'll all be nice and snug and because it is normally I would paint something like this off of the vehicle and install it later but um, I don't want to have to deal with paint at the glue points because um, I don't want it to pop off but being that this is you know detached cable uh, you know it's separate from it's not molded onto the sides it should be fairly easy to paint so anyway that's just a quick note on the cable I'll continue on with that and come back whenever I'm ready to start installing the fenders and some of the other parts. Okay, I have <coughs> installed the cable here on the side. Um, it wasn't too bad. It's a little bit tricky putting these uh, clamps in, but uh, I used the pegs. There's mounting pegs for the cable to loop around I use that to actually um, run it around and then I installed the cable ends so it turned out pretty cool not bad for a model this old back in the old days I don't think they did much metal in these things but so I got that done um, that's drawing I have uh, started on the the next part is the fenders so what I'm doing is they come in a long strip and uh, what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to uh, saw them into pieces because that's the way they were because I want to model a little bit of uh, unevenness to them I don't want them to be real straight in one piece add a little bit to the realism and I think I'll probably bend some up in the corners battle damage and so forth so I'm going to saw those apart and get those mounted onto the hull in their separate pieces and uh, then I'll move on to the upper deck 
Okay, so here's what I'm doing with the uh, fenders. I'm taking the whole strip, taking my razor saw, and simply cutting it on the joint. There's already a big gap there to simulate space, so it's not really taking away any material. And they're top and bottom, so I can very easily cut it like that. Then I just take my sander and clean it up. Then what I'm going to do is for the back here, I'm going to have at least one fender missing. So I'm taking my X-Acto knife and very carefully, now this is not the one I want to cut so I'm not going to do it, but I very carefully shave off the bolt head and end up with something like, and I really doubt you're going to be able to see this on the camera, but I end up with this little bolt head. And then what I'll do is I'll cement that on the side of the hull where the um, fender is supposed to be. And that will simulate a uh, fender mudguard, or yeah, fender missing. So I've already lined out on the side here uh, with a pencil and a straight edge so I can keep them lined up as I go because I'll glue them on individually. Now on the other side here I've already got a sample of what I've done and uh, that's what I did on this side except on this side I made this one bent pretty pretty good and uh, I kind of wanted to simulate bolt heads being sheared off so all I did was drill with my pin vise I drilled holes there and there to make it look like they sheared off and then I bent them up and then I added this little bit of support here with some uh, styrene sheet so I'm going to continue on with that and then I'll have the uh, fenders done and I can move on to step 15 okay here is our quick recap of steps 14 through 16 14 was the cable the uh, track repair cable fenders the 15 and 16 were all the upper upper hull detail so that is all done um, I've got all the tools installed headlights cleaning rods and the fly the FIFL air system or yeah FIFL air filtration system and uh, various and sundry hooks, handles, tools. Um, the one part I did not install was the uh, tow cables because I'm going to be scratch building some of those just using these ends. Um, I had some cable but it was too small in diameter so I'm not going to use that. I'm going to have to get some uh, but I'll use these eyes and uh, then I'll put those <coughs> I'll install those but I won't be doing that till after I paint anyway because I'm, I want to paint these off of the kit it'll just be easier um, some notes on the uh, assembly of all this the hatches as you can see are operable so it's kind of groovy so you can see down inside the kit was designed so that you could take this whole top plate off to see the interior. Um, there's not really enough interior to really warrant doing that and you can see plenty through um, here and if you take the turret off so I opted to glue this in place and there was a few tricky fit situations here. The back um, has a bit of a gap right there and there's not really any way to fix that totally so I'm just gonna leave it it doesn't look too bad it really doesn't detract from the look of it I don't think um, and you know other than that it fit together pretty well now one of the modifications I did make was on the fenders the fenders as I noted earlier in one of the other videos it was just a long strip 
So I did is I cut it into sections and I wanted to model some damage. So on this one here, I bent it up pretty good and I added the internal brace um, that you can see in photos of the real deal. And what I did is I cut the bolt heads off of the fender itself and drilled it out and also drilled out the hole. Uh, you may not be able to see it in the video, but I drilled it out so it looks like it popped the bolt heads off then bent, bent this one up a little bit and then none of them line up uh, properly which is how they look in most of the uh, photos of the the real vehicle. I did the same on this side except I completely removed this front panel here or uh, front fender portion and what I did is I shaved the I shaved the bolt heads off of the fender and drilled some holes just to use as a template and using that as a template I marked the hole here and used the bolt heads that I shaved off to replace here to show that maybe it was a, a piece of a fender that was mangled beyond use so they removed it but they kept the bolt heads for later use and then I did another brace here so that pretty much finishes up steps 14 through 16. The next steps will be 17 through 19, which pretty much covers all of the interior of the turret, you know, the main gun, the floor plate, uh, you know, the, um, the turret basket with the seats and mechanisms, gears, so on, and then the, uh, uh, the hatches, the escape hatch uh, for the back, and that will complete all of the interior of the turret. Then it'll be on to the next parts. So anyway, that's it for this portion, and this will be the end of this episode. And, uh, the next video will pick up on step 17. See you next time.